It's 1986, Newark, and Michael Morrison is offered the opportunity of a lifetime. A new job, a fresh start with a secure future as a cop. But Mike has no idea he's about to join what he calls the biggest gang in America. I'm Saren Jones, and this is Black and Blue, Behind the Badge, a story about what happens when you have to pick a side. Follow Black and Blue, Behind the Badge, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, or wherever you get your podcasts. You're listening to a Frequency Podcast Network production. Today's story is one of those things that seems to impact only a certain group, but is designed to impact a whole lot more than that. The Quebec government is doubling tuition for out-of-province students to give more money to Francophone universities. Tuition for Canadians outside Quebec will jump to $17,000 from just under $9,000 beginning fall 2024. Of course, out-of-province students wanting to attend English universities in Quebec would be angry at this, and they certainly are. But the real question is who else will feel this, intentionally or not? There are prestigious English universities in Quebec. Will this impact their ability to draw talent and maintain world-class status? Will this change the linguistic makeup of the cities that are home to thousands of these students? Will it shift the integration of international students to Quebec, or even the ability of Canadians from elsewhere to build a life in the province. Will this extra money help Quebec's Francophone universities? Do they really need that much help? Why does this change have so many in the province up in arms? I'm Jordan Heath-Rawlings. This is The Big Story. Alicia Rubertucci is a reporter with City News Montreal who has been covering this issue, including the protests that surround it. Hello, Alicia. Hi, Jordan. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. I know that this has been summed up very simply by some folks, but can you just explain exactly what Quebec is doing with post-secondary tuition, who it will and who it won't impact, at least on the surface? Absolutely. So on October 13th, the CAQ government, they basically announced that as of September 2024, tuition for new out-of-province students will go up to around $17,000 a year. So that's nearly double what it costs now. So right now it costs just under $9,000 and it'll hit $17,000 for those who are coming from different provinces. International students will see a minimum of $20,000 in tuition. The government says that universities can charge what they want for them to attend, but the government will collect $20,000. And that money will go directly to Francophone universities. Now, the fee hike applies to undergraduate and graduate students only who begin their studies in 2024. PhD and research students won't be impacted and students under international agreements are also exempt. How many students in general, uh, because I know we don't know next year's enrollment, but, but how many students would this typically impact? Right. So the French language minister, Jean-Francois Roberge, says that there are 32,000 students that come from outside of the province and attend English universities. So that actually is more than about 50 percent of -of out-of-province students in Quebec come from Ontario. So in total, tens of thousands and specifically 32,000 attending English university. Now, before we get into what the impacts of this might be, which is stuff that a a lot of organizations and people have uh, expressed concerns about, what is the purpose of this policy from the point of the government? What's it intended to achieve? Well, Quebec says it's responding to what it claims is the decline of the French language in Montreal. So Jean-Francois Rabelge, the French language minister, told reporters that these out-of-province students can be heard speaking English in the city's downtown core and elsewhere. And so they want to stop that. They say that that needs to change in terms of university students coming to Montreal. They say that there has to be a mastery of French. The higher education minister, Pascal Derry, who also made the announcement alongside Robert, said that these students come in and they get their education in Quebec, most often in Montreal, and they tend to leave the province after graduating. And so 
they say that this is not a measure against Anglophones per se. They're not closing the door to any Anglophone students who want to come to McGill, Concordia in Montreal, or bishops in our eastern townships. But they say that they want to have these students learn French. So they're almost disincentivizing them from coming to university here or telling them you got to pay more. To the first point about uh, Montreal and to a similar extent, the Eastern Townships. I'm an Anglophone. I was born in Montreal. My family is from the Eastern Townships. This is not a new phenomenon. People speaking English in downtown Montreal or in universities in the Eastern Townships. Like, it, it, right. Do we know why, why now? Like 20, 30 years ago, that's what was happening. Well, it's interesting. I mean, Quebec has had multiple policies to try to strengthen the French language. But it seems that this announcement is coming at the heels of, uh, I guess, disappointing performance by the government in the Jean Talon by-election a few weeks ago in in Quebec City. Mm. So the CAQ lost a seat to the uh, Parti Québécois. So it could be politics as well as the language fight. So the government says this measure is a way for them to stop the decline. They really want to promote the French language, but maybe it has something to do with their recent loss of a seat at the National Assembly. Do we know if the Anglophones from out of province that this policy is intended to discourage are actually taking spots away from Quebecois students, Francophones, or bilingual people who would otherwise be going to McGill and Bishops? Like, are there the homegrown students, I guess, waiting to replace them? I don't have evidence to back that up, but I don't feel that the government themselves have come forward and said, well, the out-of-province students are taking away spots. I think they just want to see them because they're coming and getting education in Quebec. They want to see what they're coming to do, sort of be reinvested into the French side of things. So when it comes to what the government standpoint is, I think it's just about what these out-of-province students represent. Uh, As you mentioned, you know, students have always come and spoken English in Montreal, and students have always been welcome from pretty much all over the world to come and study in Montreal and in Quebec. The language minister just says it's a problem that tens of thousands of people arrive and leave without mastering French. And they say that it creates an anglicizing effect on the metropolis. So I don't necessarily know if it's about taking spots away. It's just about making sure that those spots that are already being filled by out-of-province students just pay more. A really quick question. I'm not sure if you have the answer to this or even if there is an answer to this, but do we know if the French language is continually declining in Quebec? Like the government clearly is legislating around that concern. Is it true? Right. You know, there have been countless studies. Um, the government will cite their, their studies on this mm-hmm. in Montreal specifically. Other organizations can, you know, do their own studies. And it's, it's a matter of he said, she said. Right. In general, the politicians in power, no matter who you speak to at a local level, at a provincial level, at the federal government level, everyone is concerned with preserving the French language here in Quebec. There is this worry that there is a threat, that there is a decline. Mm -hmm. But in terms of can we back that up, in some fashion we can, because there have been even StatCan studies done saying that in the house, the language that people speak is often a mix of English, a mix of French, but it's not predominantly French. So I think with the government of Quebec, it wants to see French become the common language and not necessarily have English dominate. I mentioned off the top that you've been covering some protests that happened in reaction to this. What has the reaction been to this in general? Uh, Who has spoken up? Oh, it's extremely strong, the criticism. I'll give you an idea before I get into what was seen at the protest. Number one, the people who have basically come forward and come out so strongly against this are the universities themselves, the English universities, specifically McGill and Concordia here in Montreal. They're obviously criticizing this because it says it'll have a direct impact on their ability to attract and retain talent in Quebec. Mm -hmm. The people who have reacted to this at the political level have been the mayor of Montreal, Valérie Plant, Quebec's opposition parties, former Quebec premiers coming together from different parties, writing an open letter, basically condemning the move, the federal government. And then again, 
just people in the population and specifically the students who were present at the protests. I can say there were thousands and a very big presence coming from Bishop's University, which says a lot because it's not a, a very big school mm-hmm. from Eastern, Eastern Townships, but uh, they basically had busloads of students come in and uh, be present for this march that basically passed through downtown Montreal, passed in front of Concordia University and ended up at McGill. They called it the Blue Fall protests. And even people from French universities and alumni uh, from different universities came out in solidarity saying they wanted to be there to show their support because if this had happened years earlier, they wouldn't have had the same opportunities. And uh, places like bishops, they say that, you know, they're at risk. This is almost a direct target to them because about 30% of their students come from out of province. What about the Francophone universities themselves? Um, This is where the money is going. Why is the money going there? And do they need that help? Are they doing poorly? Right. So obviously, when it comes to the heads of the Francophone universities, it's, it's a mixed reaction. Some are for this and some are against this. And if you just look recently, a few posted and published a open letter in uh, different outlets recently. When it comes to the leaders of the Université de Montréal, Université Laval, Sherbrooke, Polytechnique, just to name a few, they say that this could devastate their finances. Even they rely on out-of-province students And they say that there is a low level of tuition coming from local students. So they say that that the shortfall comes to about a billion dollars a year, which the government doesn't really make up uh, when it comes to universities in the rest of Canada. And then the heads of about 10 institutions in the Université du Québec network backed the government, saying that they need this rebalancing of income between all universities for them to meet workforce needs and give French language university the means to contribute more on the social, scientific and cultural and economic development of Quebec is what they basically said in their recent open letters. This is obviously, um, for a lot of people involved, an emotionally charged issue as anything to do uh, with language is in Quebec. I guess my question, and you know, we won't officially know the answer to this, but Do the experts think that this will actually have the kind of impact that these protests are afraid it will be or that the government wants it to have in terms of like changing the linguistic makeup of downtown Montreal, which to me seems a pretty intractable thing to do? Right. I don't actually know the answer to that, but I do know that this will change the makeup of universities themselves. So perhaps there will be fewer out-of-province students who decide to come. Maybe the universities can supplement and find ways to attract talent in another way. I don't believe that there will be more local students applying to fill those positions. But in terms of whether fewer out-of-province students show up, maybe it will change the makeup of downtown Montreal. But if you just walk through the streets, we are currently in the, the core of the city right now. And Around the McGill campus, you do hear a lot of English. If certain experts feel that students won't be deterred 100%, because I, I did read something in regards to a, an assistant professor, professor at the Université de Montréal saying that, yes, people will, will reconsider, but some will still come and still try to weigh the benefits and say that it's worth it because Quebec still has the lowest tuition fees in terms of Canada, uh, Canadian education. Mm. And Uh, There still is a great reputation at these institutions. So some may not be deterred to come over. The English will still be there. So I don't think there's a way to necessarily eliminate it from downtown Montreal. We've spoken so far basically strictly about out-of-province Canadian students who come to Montreal and the Eastern Townships, which, I mean, naturally we're a Canadian podcast, but I want to ask you about international students and the concern that beyond changing the linguistic makeup of Montreal. You know, Montreal is an extremely diverse city, and a lot of people come through the international student program in order to stay in Canada. Is there concern that this will lessen the diversity of applicants available to these universities, or will international students just pay anyway because they see it as a way into Canada? Absolutely. I mean, uh, international students come through a program called PEC, which 
as you mentioned, that is a way for them to then get their visas and even work visas and student visas, and they can come and work here and pretty much stay. I didn't necessarily hear any concerns about that yet. That's still to be determined and uh, to be done for future stories. But the affordability is at top of mind for those I spoke to, specifically a couple of international students I spoke to at uh, the protest, who obviously this does not affect them, but it affects people perhaps in their circle, their families, and they say they already pay 20000 So if that means that universities will be significantly increasing it more to meet the demands of the Quebec government, they say 20000 is already ridiculously priced for them. One student from Colombia was telling me that $20,000 back home is like buying three houses uh, where he comes from. So he was saying they already pay way more than local students. And ultimately, I think this will deter them from coming. Has all of the opposition to this, the fact that even some of the uh, Francophone university leaders have spoken out as well as the universities this applies to, and of course the protests of the students and others in the streets, has the government commented on any of this opposition and have they said anything about potential changes to this or tweaks or anything, or is this just like, this is the deal, plow ahead, it starts? I mean, anytime they've been challenged on this, they will uh, go back to their main point. We're here to protect the French language is what they say. They want to stop the decline and they want to see the increase of the use of the French language. So when it comes to reversing this, we don't know if they'll backtrack. But as of right now, they haven't shown any indication that this measure will be completely reversed. Last question, because you brought up a recent by-election loss, the CAQ has throughout their term, been very much focused on preserving the French language and finding ways to do that in kind of all walks of life. Do we know if that strategy is working for them? They seem to be doubling down on it here, but is it the fact that the strategy isn't working that cost them the seat or maybe the fact that they are so focused on it that might have done that? Well, it's interesting that you bring this up at a time when Premier Legault is taking responsibility for his parties sagging in poll numbers. So they're actually polling downward lately. They have been quite popular in the last years, basically unwavering support in Quebec for the CAQ. And just recently that they've seen a drop of four points in a month. So I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but it seems like people aren't as in favor of them as they once were. Of course, we'll see that in the in the next couple of years with uh, another election coming. But essentially, they can be hurting from this even more. Alicia, thank you so much. Always fascinating to discuss the language debate and its impact on policy in Quebec. It's never an easy conversation. Right. Thank you so much for having me. Alicia Rubertucci from City News Montreal. That was The Big Story. For more, you can head to thebigstorypodcast.ca. You can always find us on Twitter at TheBigStoryFPN. You can always email us to let us know what you've thought of a recent episode or what you think you might like to hear next. That address is hello at TheBigStoryPodcast.ca. And you can call us anytime to leave a voicemail. That phone number is 416-935-5935. The Big Story is available in every single podcast player and a reminder... If you have a smart speaker, all you need to do is ask it to play the Big Story podcast. Thanks for listening. I'm Jordan Heath-Rawlings. We'll talk tomorrow.